importantly, the VCA requires a certain level of outreach. The counties conduct outreach to community members to educate them about the voting changes in their county. Disparities in turnout by race, ethnicity, age continue, and they're still quite substantial, right? They are entrenched, and with the presence of the VCA, we haven't seen that removed. Getting to where we need to be with the Voters' Choice Act has been a very long and winding road. Three out of 10 or 30% of infrequent voters cite a lack of information about the candidates um, and issues as reasons for not voting. When I hear this information, I hear voters telling us, or non-voters telling us, this is where I'm struggling. Um, and I think these are very clear opportunities for us to consider about, okay, how can we address where folks are struggling? For a lot of low income and communities of color, there is a lot of disinformation and misinformation targeting these groups. And so for us, um, that can really erode at the this idea of democracy. Our goal and hope is that really we close the participation gap. And a lot of the times these elections officials, they don't have all of the capacity nor the resources to do all the work. They can't reach every language. They can't reach every constituency. That's kind of what I think successful VCA implementation looks like. We have got to resource both county officials and, uh, and culturally competent community-based messengers who know best how to turn out their communities and how to communicate with their communities. Their revisioning of their uh, their VCA advisory council, I think that's very exciting. I think that's there's a lot of future there of what we look at the VCA and how it's going to shape um, the state of California. Getting money behind voter education and outreach for the VCA and for more uh, and more broadly is absolutely critically important to addressing this. Uh, problem of the participation gap, which is, I think, our biggest democracy problem here in California.